Hello and welcome to this reading vlog slash book review of The Prisoner's Throne by Holly Black. The Prisoner's Throne is the second book in the Stolen Air duology by Holly Black. And guys, I'm very excited because I'm relatively new to booktube and therefore this is the first new release that I've actually read as it's been a new release, if that makes sense. So this book literally came out today in the UK. It's the 5th of March. Sorry, I'm faffing with my hair. Let me actually just leave that. It's the 5th of March and I actually pre-ordered it on Amazon. So that's very exciting. Bit of context if you're new to this whole world that we're about to delve into. The first book in this duology, as I mentioned, The Stolen Heir. This is what it's about, in the words of Goodreads. A runaway queen, a reluctant prince, and a quest that may destroy them both. Eight years have passed since the Battle of the Serpent, but in the icy north, Lady Nora of the Court of Teeth has reclaimed the Ice Needle Citadel. There, she is using an ancient relic to create monsters of stick and snow who will do her bidding and exact her revenge. Shuren? Shuren? When I was reading her name in the first book, it was one of those words that you know it kind of just in your head goes to gobbledygook because I was like, how do I say it? Is it Surin? Anyway, don't bully me. Child queen of the court of teeth and the one person with power over her mother fled to the human world. There she lives feral in the woods. Lonely and still haunted by the merciless torments she endured in the court of teeth, she bides her time by releasing mortals from foolish bargains. She believes herself forgotten until the storm hag, Bogdana chases her through the night streets. Shuren is saved by none other than Prince Oak, heir to Elfheim, to whom she was once promised in marriage and whom she has resented for years. Now 17, Oak is charming, beautiful and manipulative. He is on a mission that will lead him into the north and he wants Shuren's help. But if she agrees, it will mean guarding her heart against the boy she once knew and a prince she cannot trust, as well as confronting all the horrors she thought she left behind. So, after saying all of that, I actually only rated The Stolen Air 3.5 stars. Basically, from what I can remember, I read it at Christmas. It was a bit too gory for my liking. As a Christian reader, but just as a human being, I didn't really like the level of gore. Also, I felt like the plot wasn't as well constructed as in the Cruel Prince trilogy, which we'll get onto in a second. And I also wasn't as invested in the characters. I bet you're thinking, why on earth are you reading the second book? Well, because I've read the Cruel Prince trilogy and the first book of the duology, and it wasn't like bad. And I also just want to complete the collection, if that makes sense. And I hear on the grapevine that Jude and Carden are returning in this book. So that's extremely exciting. But what else did I put on my review? Oh, I've literally just said everything I've said on the review. So all of that being said, if you are new to my channel, the USP of my channel is that I am a Christian reader and therefore I'm gonna hopefully be reviewing books from a Christian perspective. I will just give you my honest opinion as a Christian reader and you can make the choice whether you wanna read a book or not. But I do think that stories are just great. <laughs> I mean, I'm a creative writing student, so. I should say that. And The Land of Fairy is one that I very much enjoy visiting from time to time. So I'm very excited to read this book. I'm also already excited to put it on my shelf. So I better get reading. I don't think there's gonna be spoilers, but if there is, I'll put it in the title. And yeah, and then I'll give you my honest review. So let's go. Totally forgot to even mention The Cruel Prince trilogy. A fellow Christian reader recommended The Cruel Prince Trilogy. I honestly didn't know what to expect because it's TikTok famous and I've not got on very well with TikTok famous books so far, but I ended up giving each book 4.5 stars. The reason being it didn't get five stars was there were a couple of like anti-Christian themes that were glorified in the books, but overall really loved them, great stories. So yeah, that was ultimately what got me into this world. This reading vlog really is all over the place. I've just realized I didn't even read you the blurb of this book. That would be a good bit to start, wouldn't it? Prince Oak is paying for his betrayal. Imprisoned in the icy north and bound to the will of a monstrous new queen, he must rely on charm and calculation to survive. When High King Carden and High Queen Jude, sorry, go to extremes to retrieve their stolen heir, 
title drop. Oak must decide whether to attempt to regain the trust of the girl he's always loved or remain loyal to Elfheim and end Ren's reign, even if that means ending her too. With the new war looming on the horizon and treachery lurking in every corner, neither Oak's guile nor his wit will be enough to keep everyone he loves alive. It's just a question of whom he will doom. Lovely. Prince trilogy is from the perspective of Jude, who's Oak's sister. The Stolen Era is from the perspective of Ren, Shuren, however you see her name. And this book, I think, is from the perspective of Oak, which is interesting. And also, big respect to Holly Black because it's hard to write from different characters' perspectives, but impressive. So, finish up the camera off and keep reading. It's 11 days later. It's the 16th of March and reading the book had to take a back burner because of life. Life happened but I am here with a reading update. I've taken the dusk jacket, dusk jacket? Dust jacket off. I honestly had my mind blown when I saw another booktuber do this because it had never crossed my mind. Whenever, whenever I read a hardback book it always gets in the way and it always slides and it's always a bit uncomfortable. And then I saw another booktuber, another booktuber, a booktuber do it and I was like, that is mind blowing. So, surely enough it has made the reading process a lot easier. So, this is the book. This is how far through I am. I'm on page 181, chapter 13, and I think Goodreads said that I was about 50% through. Um, sorry, I hope I haven't just given you a spoiler. But yeah, I'm going to give you a bit of a reading update. So, something that I have found in the Stolen Air duology as opposed to the Cruel Prince trilogy is these books, The Stolen Air and The Prisoner's Throne, are, are a lot more gory. There's one particular part, it's not really a spoiler, but it takes place in the Ice Needle Citadel, which is a, it's the Court of Teeth in like Elfheim, the land of fairy. I'm not quite sure because I don't know if Elfheim is where the citadel is because there's just been this whole bit that's happened and it's talking about people, well, folk, the fairies who have come from the land of Elfheim. So I'm like, is the citadel in Elfheim? I'll just need to Google it. But anyway, there's this bit of the citadel, just something to do with the decor and like, yeah, I'm not going to repeat it, but it's, it's something that's frozen to the walls and every time it's mentioned, I hate it. So that's one thing. And I don't know if this was the case in the Cruel Prince trilogy or if it just wasn't emphasised as much, but there's a big focus on, like, murder, which, as a Christian, but just as a human being, like, is not the best. And I don't enjoy it. I can't quite understand if Holly Black is trying to glamorise it or what, but that's just my honest reaction. But all of that being said, those are my two things that I'm a bit like, mm, about. That being said, Holly Black writes incredible political fantasy. I love the Core Prince trilogy and I didn't quite understand because honestly, this TikTok famous and a lot of TikTok famous books, I'm thinking of like, what's it called by Sarah J Maas? Akatar. I haven't gone near that because I know that it's got so much smut in it and a lot 
a lot, honestly, of TikTok famous books are so smutty. So when I picked up The Cruel Prince, recommended by another Christian, I was like, let me just be so careful. But surely enough, it's not like that. And I didn't understand why I enjoyed it so much, honestly, until I heard someone say, The Cruel Prince is political fantasy. And as part of kind of this series, The Prisoner's Throne is political fantasy too. But I'd argue, no, it is. This is one other thing about this book, The Stolen Heir, the first book in the duology, I would say is less political because it follows the story of Ren as she's kind of going on an adventure. Whereas this, it focuses on third person perspective but focused on Oak, we're in Oak's head. And it is very political and I'm enjoying that. And I'm becoming really interested just in politics. I did a journalism degree and I was somewhat interested, but then especially in the past year or so, that's kind of like escalated and obviously it shouldn't come above God, but we are imperfect humans and we will sin and put things above God and he'll, he'll show us that and he'll forgive us when we bring it to him, which is amazing. Trusting in Jesus to sacrifice anyway, a little bit of a gospel detour, but all that to say I've become really interested in that type of stuff in real life and so maybe that's why this appeals to me but anyway yeah so I'm about halfway through the book. Holly Black's writing just continues to be so not easy meaning it's basic writing but just flows really easily and as a creative writing student I'm really enjoying reading her work and just noting techniques she uses, metaphors, stuff like that. What I will say, she does overcomplicate sentences sometimes and I'm like, you just don't, you can just simplify that sentence. And also sometimes the structure is a bit hard to follow. I wouldn't say her books are that structurally outstanding. They're a bit jumpy, but it doesn't take away from my enjoyment of it. The world she creates, she's created is so great. Um, and there's just something about it, which I open it and I just, I don't count pages. I'm just like, yes, I'm really in this book, really enjoying reading it. And that's what I did last night. I made a little YouTube short about it. It was Friday night. Did I leave the house? No. Firstly, my clubbing days are over um, when I became a Christian. But secondly, I made this YouTube short about like someone saying, shouldn't you be leaving the house on a Friday? And I'm like, I am. And I was like, go on, Lydia. Of course I'm leaving the house, but I'm just going to the land of fairy. I'm really enjoying being back in this world, but I have a feeling often when I pass this point in a book, it escalates. The second half of a book is always quicker than the first half of the book. <laughs> pleased to report that it is book review time. I've also tried to light this candle I think four times and I don't know what's going on. I think I've melted the wick into the wax so that's just there for <laughs> decoration. Before we get into the book review I just need to draw attention to this bookshelf. This is my bookshelf from my master's degree with the set texts. If you, you probably wouldn't, if you are a Christian coming to my channel for book recommendations, do not take this shelf as a book recommendation shelf. These shelves, 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 absolutely do. But just wanted to put a disclaimer out there and just make you aware that that is the situation. So, The Prisoner's Throne by Holly Black. Thank you for staying this far into the video. I, it's currently, what day is it? Monday the 18th of March. So it's taken me just under a fortnight to read this book, which is very slow. Um, but like I said, life happened and it's fine. We are escaping from the booktube puzzle culture this year. There are more important things than meeting our Goodreads targets. And it's more important that we enjoy reading and keep it as a hobby rather than something that stresses us out 
anyway, that being said, I finished this book last night, Sunday evening, and I ended up rating it, drumroll please, 3.5 stars, which is the exact same as The Stolen Air. Let's start with what I loved. The Folk of the Air series, so what I mean by that is we've got the Cruel Prince trilogy, the Cruel Prince, the Wicked King, the Queen of Nothing, the Stolen Air, and now the Prisoner's Throne. So that's what I mean when I say the Folk of the Air series. We've also got the kind of little accompanying book about the King, the Prince of Alfame and how he learned to love or hate stories. Pretty important distinction. That's what I mean by the Folk of the Air books. I've really enjoyed them. There's something about the way that Holly Black writes is it's very fast paced, very gripping. And I really enjoy that in a book. I really struggle with books that can't keep my attention, um, whether that's the style of writing or in Holly Black's case, um, she keeps my attention by the constant kind of events, action, or like conversations and things we find out in the conversations between characters. So loved that. I also really just, I put on Goodreads, the world building in like capital letters because I don't think I even need to explain it. Um, the Folk of the Air books take place in the land of fairy, um, Elfheim, and just the depth to each kind of species of character and each location in Elfheim and just the history of Elfheim. It's really quite outstanding and quite remarkable. And I really feel like Holly Black knows this world inside out, which definitely comes across as a reader. So I really enjoyed that. It got just above a 3.5 stars because, why did it get more than 3.5 stars? Because often my criteria for giving a book three stars often is like, I enjoyed it, but I'll probably forget about it. Um, but I did enjoy reading it. I wanted to keep reading it, that type of thing. Perhaps why it got a higher rating, 3.5 stars, comes off the back of the Cruel Prince trilogy. And because in this book, we do get elements of that being brought back in. Um, I rated each of those books at the time I read them, which was last summer. I gave them each 4.5 stars. And I think that probably did bring this book up. But if I just read this and The Stolen Air just as a duology, I don't know if that would have been the case. But also, these books couldn't have been created because it, it is built off the back of what we learn in the Core Prince trilogy. Anyway, all of that being said, the reason it lost 1.5 stars for me is, and I might be remembering this incorrectly because like I said, I read them last summer. The Cruel Prince books, I don't remember them being this gory. Yeah, I mentioned this before in the vlog, but just details of the violence and the themes of murder within the books um, seem to be fleshed out more in this duology. And as a Christian reader, um, that didn't quite sit right with me in places, but also just as my personal taste, I didn't like the gory bits. And what I mean by the Christian perspective, kind of bringing that in, is I did feel like in places, murder was potentially glorified a little bit, but the reason I didn't put the book down was there are a couple of places where I thought it was gonna end in murder, but it really didn't and Holly Black didn't condone it and she took the plot in a different direction. So I honestly am a bit confused to be honest, with the whole thing. Um, but it does, I suppose, link into the idea of it being like a political fantasy book, which ironically is why I have loved this series because I went into it very wary of it becoming a romanticy book. I personally just don't enjoy romance books unless it's like the classics. I don't like a lot of modern day romances. So I was a bit like cautious. But then when I read the first folk of the air book, The Cruel Prince, I was like, this isn't a romanticy book. This is a political fantasy book about strategy and about planning and about, well, politics. So I did enjoy that. But ironically, that's potentially why we've got these themes of, of violence in there, kind of the war aspect of it. But yeah, just being completely honest. And if you are a Christian viewer, this I say they are quite violent books, to be honest, but I can't watch violence in films, but for some reason in a book, if I'm reading it, I'll just skim over it to the point where I don't let my brain imagine it. Content warning a little bit for that, but I might be mistaken. I'm sure they're YA because I definitely got YA vibes from it because even though that it was mentioned, kind of the violence, it wasn't 
in your face. It wasn't really detailed, but it was just a bit gorier from my recollection, correct me if I'm wrong, than the Cruel Prince trilogy anyway. So yeah, that was kind of why the rating went down. Also, probably should have mentioned this sooner, a big reason. This book is from, it's written in third person. I'm showing you that I'm doing a creative writing degree now. It's written in third person, but we follow the perspective of Oak. The first book in this duology is third person, but from the perspective of Ren. I won't give any spoilers, but they are two characters who do appear in the Core Prince trilogy, but as children, and by the time we get to this duology, they are grown up. And I can't remember what I was going to say. Give me a second. <laughs> oh yeah, I just was not invested in Ren and Oak's relationship. And I won't give any spoilers, but that's all that needs to be said. And I think it might come down to Ren not being fleshed out as a character, to be honest. I didn't really, I felt like she was quite two-dimensional. And honestly, the same for Oak, but he had a bit more complexity to his character. Jude and Carden and the characters in the first book, I feel like had very specific characteristics or identifiable character traits. And they felt like they came off the page. Personally, I don't think the same can be said in these books. We also, in this book, have a relationship between two of the male gods. And I will say that it is mentioned in the first book of this duology, but in this book, it's fleshed out more, but not really fleshed out, which ties into the whole thing about it being within the romance side of things is closed door. And so there's no smut in these books. There are moments where the plot seems to be going in that direction, but then it's very closed door. Hence why I think this might be a YA book. Um, but yeah, that's potentially a content, um, not warning, but something to just be aware of if you're going to read this book. And apart from that, I think we're pretty good. I think there are a couple of swear words, but nothing that even stands out. I think I can only remember one time I saw a swear word. I don't know if this video will have been helpful. You might not be a Christian. You might be new to my channel. I kind of wanted to be one of the first people to read and review the book and you know at the end of the day it's not a christian book and so there are probably going to be things in here that potentially a christian author wouldn't write about we're called to be in the world but not of the world so just be cautious when you're reading hope that's been helpful hope you enjoyed the video i'm enjoying doing these kind of like specific book videos thanks for being here see you soon goodbye and god bless